one of the things I love about the internet is connecting like-minded people. The world of aviation is not just a hobby, but a subculture. Subcultures give us a way to bond through shared interests and help lower our social barriers. People inside a group start with a high level of trust. This reduces social friction. When I was going through flight training, I felt a little lost. A lot of it was to be expected during COVID. You just didn't see many people face to face. Some of it was because I'm not on the traditional career oriented aviation path. I started watching YouTube videos while I was training because I really needed to get the sight picture of landings. It really helped. I found fellow travelers with Chris's Midlife Pilot podcast, a handful of, well, middle-aged people learning to fly for recreation. Listening to other low-hour pilots helped me feel less alone. One great thing about the internet is connecting it to real life. We can get angry and hide behind an account, or we can seek out our people and connect as humans. When Brian proposed an idea of a fly into Nashville, I knew I had to make it work. I started planning immediately. Imagine planning for a trip to a new city, but now I add airplane rental, which is definitely not like renting a car, and that's assuming the weather cooperates. Ben, the sage, offered to fly me up from Atlanta, meaning I'd fly commercial from Portland to Atlanta, then fly with Ben in his 182 to Nashville, then rent a plane from there. It added to the complexity, but I was honored that Ben invited me. Aviation involves a lot of planning, attention to detail, and preparing for anything that might go wrong. It attracts people who like structure and use checklists. It can be stressful or fun or both. Even though flying in Nashville took a lot of planning, the magic happened between the structure. It's important to be open to these moments rather than focusing on a plan and a schedule. The plan or the structure is the foundation of the trip. The magic is what happens after that structure has been put into place. It's important to be open-minded to adventure versus focusing on the structure. The moments I remember from this trip are those unexpected moments. It's a domino effect. Learning to fly led me to the Midlife Pilot podcast, to the community, to Nashville, to Tullahoma, and pretty soon I'm being asked to pull a DC-3 prop while there's an Osprey in the background. So I named out some people earlier. I got to understand Brian when I listened to him planning his long cross country for the Outer Banks trip. Then I learned what an artist he is, and now I look forward to his philosophy that happens to use aviation. He's very zen in the art of motorcycle maintenance. Chris is the OG midlife pilot. He has similar creative instincts and expresses them in his own way. He's done so much creatively, and he also built a flying club. Ben got nicknamed the Sage on the Outer Banks trip. He started earlier and has more hours than most of us, but being the Sage is about more than that. I got to see his world at McCollum outside Atlanta, then see how he interacted with everyone he met. I'll stop name dropping now. I had such a great time talking with Michael and Josh and Peter, and Michael, and Katie. It's these interactions with people that happen after we've done the planning, after we've gotten the chores done. Sometimes the story happens in the structure, sometimes great stories come from bad events, but it usually happens organically. We have experiences and make stories when we're around other people, when we're vulnerable, and when we have trust. We're in such a place of privilege to be able to fly airplanes. Ultimately, they're just a way to generate stories and make connections to other humans. It's hard to conceive that we're going to fly planes together. It doesn't matter what you call it, sport, subculture, hobby. It's about connections. It's not about the airplanes. The airplanes connect us to the subculture, which connects us to each other.